Hey everyone, my name is Blue. Alright, there's no time to waste, you've already seen the name of this video. So before we start though, I do want to take a second to thank everyone who's been watching my videos so far. And I also wanted to thank everyone for getting the harem ending video up to over a thousand views. It happened so quickly, it's just, uh, I don't know, I, 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 that's fucking ridiculous, man. Anyways, thank you for supporting the channel up until this point. We're a small channel, but hopefully that changes someday. Um, I don't know, consider subscribing, something something percentage are subscribed, I don't know. Anyways, Elite Four time, let's go. Alright, so basically from here on out till the champion fight, this is basically a Nuzlocke. Except the enemies have max EVs for some reason to make them even harder. We got the classic four members, those being Sydney, Phoebe, Glacia, and Drake, as well as the champion Wallace. All their teams have been changed in Emerald Enhanced, and they're pretty strong. The plan is pretty simple. Any half-decent fighting type that sweeps Sydney can also take care of Glacia, and any fairy type that can take on Phoebe can also sweep Drake. Yes, it's pretty easy when you think about it, but there's also Wallace, which is no joke. Like in Vanilla, he has a team of all water types, Save for a scissor for some reason. Don't ask why there's a scissor on a water type team. I didn't make this game. So let's just go over the encounters real quick. I go to Slack Off Garden, which is left of Lily Cove, and catch myself a wild Slack Off and name it Dad Bod. Then I go to Route 102, where we get ourselves a route who I name Moon. I make sure it's a female so we can later evolve it into a Gardevoir. Finally, we get a Sentret, which can be found on Route 101, and name it Valid Furry. And yeah, along with the best bug, Pebble, and Zipzap, that's our team. I'll admit, having a golem on the team makes things somewhat harder than they should be, but after about 3 days of planning, we got a somewhat decent but not completely perfect plan. I think it's better that I explain it while actually playing the video in the background, so let's just get into it. Victory Road isn't really anything special, so no need to recap what happened there. We enter the Pokemon League and show our badge case and the run begins. First up is Sydney, who leads a Persian with Focus Sash. This thing is well known within the Emerald Enhanced community for being incredibly annoying, as it has Prankster along with plenty of status moves and can easily leave huge gaps in your teams. Luckily though, we're leading a Slacking which has Drain Punch and is carrying a Person Berry which allows us to break Persian Sash and force Sydney to heal, which gives us a free turn. Next comes the High Dragon, which is absolutely terrifying, and I switched to Gardevoir as I'm expecting a Draco Meteor, who being part Fairy type is immune. This forces the AI to switch, and I'm expecting Seviper as it has Sludge Wave, which is super effective on Gardevoir, so on the same turn, I switch into Pebble, who, spoiler alert, won't be getting any more action for the rest of the run. I'm sorry, Pebble. We have Sturdy, meaning we can take any hit the Seviper uses on us, and we can fire back with the super effective Ground Gem Boosted Earthquake, which always just barely kills the Seviper. It goes down, and now comes Kron. Thank you, Pebble, for your service. So now we switch into Valid Furry, who normally sucks. However, in this realm, Furret has the ability Fur Coat, and with a lot of defense investment, can take a lot of hits, which you'll see in action right now. We set up some coils to further boost our defense as well as boost our attack and use agility for a small speed boost. We then baton pass into Dadbot who uses Amnesia before taking out the Crawdont and well that's pretty much it as Dadbot can single handedly take out the rest of Sydney's team including the Hydreigon which would normally one shot us but thanks to an agility boost goes down before landing a hit. Yeah it's that easy. Alright next up is Phoebe who leads with what is a probably the stupidest spirit tomb ever. Okay, so we lead with Moon. We set up a safeguard to prevent Will-O-Wisp from working on us as spirit tomb precisely goes for a Will-O-Wisp. We then start setting up Calm Minds as it sets up Omen which is a weather condition exclusive to Emerald Enhance, which boosts Psychic, Ghost, and Dark moves and weakens Normal and Fairy type moves, and then starts using Pain Split for some reason. Yeah, I, I, I don't fucking know man. Keep in mind that this thing has Nightshade as its only attacking move, so yeah, I don't I don't really know what's going on here. Anyways, we max out our special attack and defense, and Spirit Tomb goes down to a Draining Kiss. We then proceed to take out Golurk with the Shadow Ball, and with the help of Omen, as well as the Trevenant in the back. At plus 6 special attack, the Chandelure just barely goes down to a Shadow Ball as well, and we use Draining Kiss on the Jellicent since it has Cursed Body which can temporarily disable our Shadow Ball, preventing us from taking down the Cathagragus in the back. Cursed Body activates and we proceed to spam some more Shadow Balls, 
And, well, yeah, that's that's Phoebe defeated, yeah. Another easy win. Alright, now it's time for Glacia, who, okay, I'm gonna be honest. In my opinion, this is the hardest to deal with when doing these runs. I've already done two other hardcore runs in the past, and I'm not gonna lie, this battle always makes me struggle the hardest. Glacial leads with a Mammoth Swine who carries Life Orb as well as the most obnoxious set of coverage moves I've ever seen. We lead with Valid Furry and start setting up some coils as we'll need to pass some attack to Dadbot, who at plus 6 can just barely take out the Avalug in the back, as well as some agility boost to outspeed the Slush Rush Glaceon in the back. So this Mammoth Swine has Stone Edge, meaning it can crit and ruin the entire plan as well as knock off removing our leftovers which we need to heal enough to actually set up. Mammal Swine actually does end up critting us once with the Stone Edge, but we're just barely able to get enough coils in and pass the Dadbot, who is carrying the Choice Scarf so we can always outspeed the Glaceon. From there, it's just spamming Drain Punches until we get the win. It, yeah, again, it's really that easy. Alright, so finally there's Drake, who can be a bit scary thanks to his Flygon which was mega buffed in this game, as well as the Dragelgon as team which can do massive damage. Originally the plan was to sweep with Furret, as Valid Furry is perfectly capable of sweeping on his own. However, the Dragelg is unfortunately bulky enough that it can take exactly one play rough and fire back with the Draco Meteor which always kills. So instead we coil pass into Moon who can tank all of Tropius' hits and then set up with some Calm Minds. I make sure to give Moon Psychic before the fight so she can take out the Dragelg, and we sweep the rest of Drake's team with Draining Kiss. And well yeah, that's the last of the Elite Four defeated, leaving only the champion. So we very carefully heal our team, give Zip Zap a Choice Scarf, and we step into the final room, the final showdown. This fight is incredibly tough, as it always starts in the rain, regardless of whether or not you have the Forecaster. The team is also full of Swift Swim abusers, similar to Juan, and well normally that would be a problem. However, because this team is so similar to Juan's, it also has the same major weakness. We lead with Zip Zap who takes a Hydro Pump from Mantine. Luckily this Hydro Pump never kills due to Zip Zap having Sturdy, and we fire back with a Thunder that always lands in the rain, taking down the Mantine. Next comes Seismitoad and we switch into the best bug who's carrying a Ghost Gem. Yeah, that's right, we're using the same strat as in Gym 5. Juan switches into Azumarill as we use Confuse Ray, then we switch into Zip Zap who luckily doesn't get hit as Azumarill hits itself in Confusion. A Thunder brings it to a sliver as Azumarill hits itself again in Confusion, knocking itself out. We then send out the best bug and it's the same story as with Juan. Hardcore Geodude, finally done. I can finally take a fucking break from this shit. And that's Wallace defeated, winning us the battle and the run. We not only managed to beat Hardcore Mode, but we managed to beat it with a Geodude as our starter, which is kinda hilarious. And at the time of this video, it makes us the first to ever do so, as no one ever picks Geodude, cause let's face it, he still sucks. Anyways, that's all I got for now, see you next time.